Hello, and thank you for stopping by the 741 channel today. Today's project is to mount this ICOM IC2100 2 meter radio in this 2004 Chevy Tahoe. And this is actually part two of a two part video series. Uh, so if you missed the first part where I showed the installation of the antenna, you may want to go watch that first. I'll leave a link to that below. And as you can see, I just got it kind of set in this bezel. And uh, it kind of fits, uh, just kind of as it is. And uh, I could take the easy route, just drill a couple of holes in the back of the bezel for wire access, and uh, maybe brace this in here, and it, and it would be good to go. It would be fully usable. But I'm a little bit concerned about airflow and heat management on the radio. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to modify this bezel internally a bit so that the radio can breathe a little bit better. So what I'll do now is just remove the bezel, and I'm just going to squeeze down it kind of between the two trays here, as you can see, and just kind of pull it out. It just pops out. As you can see, there are two connectors that need to be removed, one for each of the cigarette lighter ports, and those just squeeze and come out. And then this is free to kind of set aside. Now that the bezel is free, let me turn it around so you can see what I'm kind of talking about here. So you can kind of see here's the the depth of the upper tray and the depth of the lower tray where I'm going to put the radio. Like I said before, I probably could just drill some holes here or maybe cut a slot in the back of the tray here for access to the wires on the back of the radio. What I think I'm going to do instead is cut most of this top part of the lower tray away and probably most of the back. So I'm just going to leave the side and the bottom and what that'll achieve is two things. Well, maybe three things, actually. The first thing, and the most important in my mind, is it'll give the radio a little bit of breathing room on top. The heat that gets generated with the, from the radio on transmit will be able to escape, uh, albeit into kind of a small area in the dashboard, but it will have some room to breathe, as opposed to being just kind of stuffed in this plastic tray. The second thing that it'll allow me to do is potentially use the stock mounting bracket to hold the radio to the bottom surface of this smaller upper tray. And that will allow the radio to kind of stay a little more secure than just being jammed into the tray. And the last advantage that this will hopefully give me is that with the back of this tray removed, the radio should sit into the dashboard a little bit. Although I'm not sure how much advantage I'll get because there are some other plastic pieces sort of inside the the inner workings of the dash there that the radio may hit again. I've got the bezel out here on the workbench and now it's time to take my trusty Dremel tool and see if I can cut this thing up. So here's what the back of the bezel looks like all cut down. And I ended up doing this in two pieces. I cut the top out first and then finished off cutting the back out. Now you can see there's a lot of burrs on here from the melted plastic as the cutoff wheel kind of went through it. So I'll need to file that down and kind of, you know, deburr all this before I put it in the truck. But you get the idea of what, uh, what I was going for here. Here's a look at the bezel with the radio sitting in it out here in the daylight where things are a little more visible. So let me first take that out. And again, here's the back where I modified it. I haven't deburred it yet. I will do that before I mount the radio in there. But let's take a look and see how this slides in. So here's what the radio looks like. And you can see without the top of the tray on there, there should be plenty of room for the heat to escape into at least the dash area. You know, again, not ideal, but better than having the plastic smushed right up against the... So the other thing that I was kind of hoping to achieve with this modification was to take the stock radio mounting bracket and to be able to attach it to the bottom of this upper tray to sort of hold the radio in place. I think that'll work. I think that idea is valid. But you may be able to see that the radio, in order to accommodate the bracket the way that I have everything cut right now, 
would have to sit beyond the end of the tray by about that much. So what I think I'll probably end up having to do is to cut this back a little bit or at least cut some slots in the plastic here so that the corners of the bracket can kind of slide in a little bit further and just move the radio forward so that it'll fit in the truck. So here's a look at the notches that I added. You can kind of see them there just behind that strengthening rib on that side and then one there on that side. And what those notches allow me to do, as I tried to show before, is get the radio slid far enough forward so that the back of the radio clears the edge of the tray and any of the other uh, impediments that are in the console of the truck. Here's what the radio looks like now that I've got the bezel more or less modified the way that I want. I may need to do a little fine tuning just to get the bracket uh, kind of situated so that I can mount it to the upper tray. I'm going to try and use the existing holes in the bracket and line them up to these holes that are in this tray if I can so I don't have to drill any more holes in it but if, uh, if I can't do that then I'll just drill a couple of holes in the upper tray and put screws in through the new holes. But having said all that this is more or less what the radio is going to look like mounted in the truck. It's been a couple of days since I installed the radio in the truck. And you can see here I've got it powered up, but I'm running this just temporarily to the cigarette lighter plug. What I want to do today, if I can get it done before it starts raining, is I want to run the power wire from the radio either uh, up to the battery of the truck, which is the way that I usually like to do it, or at the very least I'll run it to uh, the fuse panel that's on the dashboard. I'm looking under the dashboard now, and I'm looking at a spot sort of up behind the dashboard that is more or less directly above the gas pedal. You may be able to tell in the camera here that there's some plastic cladding there, uh, probably sound deadening material, that sort of a thing, but there's an opening in it right there and that looked like a good spot to drill a hole. There was probably some sort of uh, factory um, option that would require wires to come through there that this truck doesn't have or some such thing like that. So that looked like a good spot. Now I've just drilled a pilot hole right there for now. I'm going to open that up a little bit bigger with my step drill and uh, I should be able to run the wire through there. Here's a look at the pilot hole from the engine side of the firewall. You can see I'm just to the driver's side of the engine. So I'm going to try and open the hole up a little bit from this side using my step drill. So this ended up being a little more challenging than I thought, but was able to kind of get everything put together here. My first thought was that I was going to attach the radio to directly to the battery. That's what I've done in uh, vehicles I've had in the past. But I didn't realize that these battery connectors have these sort of rubber grommets on them that was going to make it difficult to attach anything with the available connectors and stuff that I had. I ended up looking under the cover of the fuse box here to see if I could find a fuse that had constant 12 volt power all the time without the key being on. So I rooted around, I rooted around, and I found this little uh, B plus cap that's right there. After doing a little bit of research, I discovered that this B plus fuse cap is in place for vehicles not equipped with external trailer braking. So if my understanding is correct, a fuse for an external trailer brake would be installed in this location if the vehicle was equipped with that option. But since my vehicle doesn't have that option and I don't believe I'll ever have a need for a trailer brake, I'm going to use this to power my radio. So this little B plus cap was over here in this side and there are two blade terminals in here. I took the voltmeter and I checked both of them and the one that's closer to the engine did not have 12 volts on it with the key off but the one that's closer to the side of the truck did. So what I ended up doing was just putting on a crimp on terminal that was able to slip over that blade and that was my hot wire for the radio. So then the next thing I needed to do was find a ground and I thought that this bolt right here would have been a good ground. This is just a little uh, kind of strengthening bar or kind of hold down bar for the battery I guess. 
So when I went to try and loosen this bolt that was in here, it ended up breaking. You can kind of see the, the head there. So I had to scrap that idea and I ended up using one of these bolts here. The bolt was a little bit bigger in diameter than I wanted and you can see this integrated washer is kind of smushing down the the plastic around the ring terminal that I crimped on there but it seems to be catching the ground just fine right there. So then I routed the wire down through here behind the fuse box and you should be able to see down there those are my two fuses each side of this wire is fused so I've got those there I can still reach my hand in and change those if I need to and then I routed the wire up along the back of the firewall there and then down through my hole that I drilled now you may be able to tell that I had to open up that hole in diameter a little bit and that was to uh, be able to pass those fuse holders through. Uh, my other option would have been to cut the wire. I could have just done that and then resoldered it, but I didn't feel like dealing with that. And I thought maybe a slightly bigger hole would be better uh, for future use if I wanted to run some more wires through here or something. The extra room was, uh, you know, probably going to be better. Now, if I had a grommet on hand, I would have put a grommet in that hole to protect the wire. And I may still do that. The next time I'm at Napa or something, I may see if they've got a grommet that I could slip over the wire and put in there just to protect any chafing or anything. But for now, I think what I'll do is run some electrical tape around that just to make sure it doesn't, you know, chafe through the edge of that hole as it is a little bit sharp. So now looking inside the truck, you can see there's the hole where the wire comes through. And it just passes up there behind that uh, bar and then up into the back of the console. I've got a little bit of slack zip tied up there and out of the way. And here's a look at the back of the console. I've got the wire connected right into the radio. There's the antenna wire. And everything's ready to go back and be put back in the truck. The last thing that I want to do before I finish this up is take this bracket and put at least one screw through one of these holes and the bracket on the radio just to keep it from moving around. Okay, so here's a look at the finished product. I've got the radio mounted in and uh, ended up, was able to use two screws up here to hold it in place so it's nice and solid. Console is back in the way that it should be. Uh, you know, fits in good, no wires coming out or anything like that. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the installation. I do, however, have one more thing to do, and that is I want to mount my external speaker in here somewhere. I decided to install this external speaker in between the two doors, sort of on the B-pillar. Um, I had to fabricate a bracket for it. I didn't have one for it. This used to be mounted with Velcro on the back, but that wasn't going to be strong enough to kind of hold it in this location. So the, the bracket I ended up fabricating, I think it was an old CB bracket, I had to drill a couple holes in it and then kind of cut the length because it stuck out beyond the speaker. But it seems like it's in there pretty good now. That should hold it just fine. Now you may be able to see on the speaker that this is a Yezu branded speaker. So I had some reservations about using this with an ICOM radio. I wasn't sure if the world would implode on itself when I hooked this up or not, but I ended up taking a chance. And since we're all still here, I guess everything's going to be okay. So I ended up running the wire, tucked it under the trim here so it's out of the way and not visible. And then got down here into the sill plates where the other coax and everything is running so it's nice and hidden there. And then uh, up under the dashboard again with the coax and the power wire. And then behind the console there's a little bit of slack coiled up there that you can't see. And then, of course, into the radio. And you might have heard it before, the, the repeater ID'd, but the, uh, the volume is good and loud. And I can actually keep it kind of on the quiet side, right there above my head. So if I've got passengers in the car that don't want to listen to this, I can still sort of monitor what's going on and not disturb them. I hope you enjoyed these videos, the installation of the NMO Mount 5 8 Wave Antenna and the radio, the ICOM IC2100, in this uh, 2004 Chevy Tahoe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.